Good morning and welcome to Wholesome Roots. Boy, do we have a lot of catching up to do, don't we? Oh. <laughs> Having fun? Yeah. Don't stand up while it's moving. Is Autumn gonna help push? She wants to get in there with you. All the way to the barn. You made it! Yay! So we've had some weather fluctuations since the last time I've talked to you guys. As you know, we had a really dry summer. We were in a severe drought. I think we're over the drought now from the amount of rain we got, but I'm not 100% sure if it took us out of complete drought conditions, but the earth is definitely saying it feels a difference. We can see how everything is greening up out here because of the rain and our pond is actually starting to get some height back to it. As we told you in our previous video where we announced our huge announcement, if you haven't seen that video, you better go back and watch it because it's pretty big news. The goats are all doing really good. What do you think, Rowan? Good. Goats are doing well? Yeah. Goats I, are doing great. If it looks like I cut my hair, out, it's just my bun. Yep, just got it in a button. So the goats are doing really well and everybody's looking pretty healthy. I did determine that Fancy Girl was losing more weight than I expected and I've been checking her eyelids very regularly and they went from pink to very pale within three days time. So my gut instinct was correct that she had some parasites coming on possibly because we have had a lot more rain lately. So we are treating her for parasites. We're using the herbs right now. And if by Friday when we get our paycheck, she is still experiencing um, some strong symptoms, we're gonna go ahead and use Quest Plus. Um, I use Quest Plus when I have barber pole situations because her eyelids are so pale, we want to get the situation under control very fast. And using the chemicals has been the only thing that's really shown to work when we get infested with barber pole. When I use the plus, it takes care of tapeworms too, which we do see tapeworm segments from time to time in our herd. That's kind of normal and it's kind of not a big deal. Usually tapeworms don't cause a lot of anemia issues or other health issues. Usually tapeworms take over and overpopulate a goat if it already has a problem. So if the goat is already sick or already battling barber pole or other parasites, that's when tapeworms are usually advantageous of the situation and, and take over. But usually tapeworms are not that big of a problem. They're something that we treat as needed. The doggies are doing good. Are you doing good, doggies? Uh, we're still battling flies, especially on Khaleesi's nose. We do have fly ointment that we put on there um, that repels it and heals it. But with her breed, it's pretty common for the flies to just kind of attack those white and black areas around the nose. Titus doesn't seem to have as much, but he does have some. But they're doing really well and they're really happy. They're good dogs. They're good dogs. They've been doing a really good job apparently keeping coyotes away because Ryan's trail cam that he has in the backwoods for deer has been picking up a lot of coyote activity and we have not had any issues up here near the barn where the dogs are kept. So we know that they're helping keep the coyotes away. Good dogs. How are you bucks doing? Good? The bucks have been pretty ruddy. They're starting to come out of it a little bit. We still have one goat that keeps coming into heat that triggers them to be ruddy again. Hello! <laughs> Virtue spent a good amount of time over at Little Bird Farm breeding Bunny Foo Foo. And he sure is happy to be home with his herd. And Peter Pepper is still skittish but looking like a beautiful buck so far. And Fluffernutter is just Fluffernutter. He's still our bottle baby. Our goal is to actually fatten Virtue up. Um, as soon as he goes out of bread all the way, we're going to ban him. Yes, you can ban a goat that big as long as they can still fit into the rubber band holder 
expander tool. You can get one in at a time and you can band them that way. So we've been waiting for the colder temperatures to get rid of the flies to do that and for him to not be in rut when we go to do it. And then we're gonna grow him out till at least December, 10 months old. 10 to 14 months is ideal for processing. So that's our intention. I've never been able to follow through with this yet, but I feel like it is truly what our family needs because we have not been able to afford red meat in the grocery store or the farm stands because it's so high priced. So for us to be able to provide our own red meat with our extra bucks is, it's a no-brainer for our family. So we're, we're, we're attempting to stick with that mindset so that we follow through with it and get some meat for our freezer. What do you think about eating one of our goats? Yeah. No. It's never an easy decision, that's for sure. It's not something I want to do, but I feel like it's something that we need to do. And so for that, I'm going to try to follow through with it. All right, you got them all fed? Yeah. And there's no eggs in there, huh? Nope. Uh, no eggs. I was hoping for some eggs in there because those are all fertile. We're going to be hatching out some quail soon. Yeah. Do you like hatching quail? Yeah. What's it, your favorite part of it? Um, holding them. Holding them? What's your favorite part of hatching quail, Liam? Holding them in there to unpack them. You still got a cold from the conference, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. But I don't anymore, which is really good. Yeah, yours seems to be all better. That is really good. No sniffles. No this nothing. one's still sniffling. He was the first one to sniffle, and he's going to be the last one to finish, huh? It's pretty incredible how fast the little tiny weeds started germinating as soon as we got some rain. So we have some work to do out here in the garden to prevent these from becoming full-size weeds. So in addition to having some rain finally come our way, we also finally got cold weather. The weekend of Halloween, we had temperatures down into freezing. So we've harvested every last little thing out of here that we can. We got the last of the roselle, we got the last of the peppers, we picked them still green so that they wouldn't be um, damaged by the frost. And so now these last two beds need to be pulled up and composted, try to save some of these beautiful lemon basil seeds. And then we are going to have more fall crops going in these beds. We've been busy separating and sorting our garlic that we grew this year, or last year I guess, and to which cloves are going to be planted again. And we're really excited about that because it looks like we're going to be able to, yeah, yellow jacket, <laughs> sorry. When a yellow jacket tries to land on you at this time of year, you don't sit still. Uh, they tend to get aggressive as it starts to cool off, so, whew. Anyway, so the garlic will be going in. We had one weekend of cold weather and then it got warmer again. So we're hoping that we see a change in direction where the temperatures start dropping more and that'll be better for the garlic. So that's our next big step is to get the garlic in the ground. We have these last three potato grow bags going. I mixed them up so I don't know which kind they are. So we won't know until we dump them out and see what we got but we're gonna wait until the cold kills the foliage all the way back and then we're gonna jump them out and see what kind of harvest we get from them I cannot wait I love fresh potatoes it's kind of cool right here these are our lambs quarters that went to seed and you can see their their seed is actually a grain that you can eat it's very high in protein and delicious and a relative of quinoa it's so nice to see it's so nice to see that these paths have remained free of weeds where the volunteers from the summer soiree 
mulch them. It's so beneficial to keep the mulch on your garden. It's the difference of that versus that. We ran out of time and didn't get these mulched at the soiree, but we will be raking down all of these little seedlings and turning them back into the soil as green manure. My thornless blackberry has been sending out long branches and what I've been doing is every time a long branch comes low enough to the ground, I go ahead and I bury that section of the branch. That one looks like it got dug up a little bit. So I bury that and allow it to root to form a whole new plant for next year. You can see we've already been pretty successful over here. This one's rooted really well. That one was the last one that was rooted really well. I cut it off and rerooted it here. So there's lots of different ways that you can propagate your own plants. We started out with just one blackberry and by the spring we'll probably have five or six at least. Well, I was going to say the bees haven't been very active because it's been so cold, but I guess because today it's bright and sunny, they are out and about and foraging today. We have lots of little asters throughout the property. You can see some back there and goldenrod. So they're taking full advantage of that last little fall nectar. I can honestly say um, with a little bit of embarrassment that I have not been a very good bee mom this year. I have not been doing inspections regularly or treating for varroa mites or even checking to see if I needed to. I have felt really intimidated by it lately and I don't know if it's my hormones or what, but it's, it's like I'm almost just uh, like, let's just let it go a little more naturally this fall and see where we go crossing our fingers that we don't have a large varroa mite population and that going into the winter our bees will be healthy enough. From watching their activity levels going in and out, they have appeared to be a very healthy hive. So I'm hoping that I can get one last inspection in and do anything that needs to be done before it gets too cold. So crossing my fingers that I have the energy and determination to do that <laughs> because really I should be doing a lot better job but got to choose my battles right now I'm growing a baby in my belly I need to put all my energy into that <laughs> that kitty follow us everywhere almost almost she's a good she's a good barn kitty yeah farm kitty at least she doesn't spend that much time in the barn but she sure loves to be out here Good, Mitzi. She loves you. Yeah. <laughs> the chickens are doing well. They're coming out of their molt. Looks like it's past time for their tractors to move. I'll have to tell Ryan that he needs to move them a little more frequently. But they're doing well. The ducks are still molting a lot, as you can see by all the feathers around the outside. This chicken tractor had a break-in. We're not sure what got in there, but we lost our lavender morons, and I'm pretty disappointed in that because we only had two morons in our collection. But the rooster, who's back there in the corner, he's a neck and neck rooster. He was actually out side of the chicken tractor and he had made his way down to the barn and was inside of our old broken chicken tractor when I got up in the morning and I thought that's just weird. Well apparently he must have fought off whatever was trying to get to the chickens and I'm really proud of him. He has no injury so that's good. He's just a super brave sweet boy. Losing that last Marans made me realize that the ducks are too loud for me to talk. Hold on, let me go somewhere else. So losing that last Marans made me realize I want more Marans chickens. So I think in the spring we'll be placing our order for Marans chicks. And in addition to some Marans chicks, we're looking at getting some meat birds, not Cornish cross. We are not fans of those probably Freedom Rangers or Rainbow Rangers or something like that, depending on what's available at the time. And possibly 
a couple of turkeys. I, I know that they usually have a minimum order, but I really would like to have some turkeys to grow out for Thanksgiving. So yeah, we're hatching quail, we're breeding goats, we're getting chicks. We're gonna have plenty of babies come April, May of this year. <laughs> that is for sure. And we are really looking forward to it. What do you think, Rowan? Good. Good what? Good everything on our farm. Good everything on our farm? Yeah. What's What's your favorite part about what we already have? Uh, dogs and we, the, no, no, the coyotes will try to um, eat our chickens or eat any of our other farm animals. So you like the fact that the dogs protect us? Yeah. That is awesome. And what's your favorite part of what we're going to be getting in the new year? In uh, the spring? Bunnies. We're not getting bunnies for the last time. We, yes we are. Rowan, why do you want bunnies? Because that they're adorable and so fluffy. And what made you want bunnies? We, because I was jealous that Little Bird Farm had some. Oh, okay. I thought it was because of your visit at the Homestead of yeah, America's Yeah, yeah, also that, also that. Yeah? Did, did your friend there teach you about bunnies? Uh, no. No? But you got a rabbit's foot and a rabbit fur. Yeah. That was awesome. I like to sleep with the rabbit skin, and I like to um, um, use the um, rabbit foot as a keychain because it is a keychain. Cool. Really want to give a big thank you to Jeremy Chambers for sharing his rabbit info at the conference and a big thank you to AJ Farms Quail for all of their support that they've given us with this quail that we've gotten from them and the quail that they've shared with us. And I just wanna say it was a really fun experience because at the conference we were camping out and we were able to serve quail that we had cooked over our campfire to all the other campers who had never tried quail before. Some of them hadn't had quail since they were a kid and were super excited to try it again. And some of them had never tried it before. And everybody agreed that it was the most delicious meat that they had ever had. And that's what's inspired us to go ahead and hatch out again for ourselves so that we can cull our older birds for a meal for our family. So we're looking at trying to get into a cycle of hatching and culling and hatching and culling so that we constantly have a meat source for our family because it's one that we all really have enjoyed eating. So we're looking forward to more quail in our diet in the future. Thanks to AJ Farms. And isn't this the best update video? I don't know. You guys think this is the best update video ever? Give it a thumbs up if you do. Yeah, and even subscribe to make us get to Google Gazillion subscribers. <laughs> yes, Google Gazillion subscribers. Yeah. For those of you that have been missing videos from us, we're going to try and try and try. Like I keep saying, we're going to try to do more. But if you don't follow us already on Instagram, we do tend to post pictures there from time to time. I'm not really good about getting on Instagram often, but I try to at least post a picture there when we have something interesting to take a picture of. <laughs> so you can follow a little bit along there. You can follow us at our Facebook group, Wholesome Roots Farmstead Friends. And we have a Facebook page also called Wholesome Roots Passionate Plants. We have a Patreon, we have a Teespring, and we have an Amazon storefront. And you can participate with any of those that you choose to as well as a way to support and stay connected with us. I just want to say how much we appreciate your patience and understanding during the time that we haven't been available on YouTube as much as often as we used to be. This summer was the most trying summer of my life, I can honestly say. We had a lot of troubles and difficulties that we had to overcome with our herd, with our marriage, with our family, with friends. We had a lot of things happening all at once that made it really hard for me to push through. 
but I did and we've come out on the other end stronger and braver than we've ever been and one of the big losses that we had nah sorry another yellow jacket ah leave me alone I don't have any protein they're very attracted to protein I'm not protein I mean I guess I am but so anyway <laughs> One of the big losses that we went through was um, that Ryan actually had to leave his job. Um, there were some circumstances that required him to leave the greenhouse and it was a difficult time for us. He had nothing lined up to replace that employment and so we spent a month struggling very hard financially to get through but the end result was a better job a job that he feels better about a job that treats him better a job that pays him better it's just all around a good feeling job i cannot wait for him to share more with you about that we will be going live friday night so make sure you join us at 8 eastern standard time on YouTube on Wholesome Roots and we will be answering any questions about the baby that I'm having, the pregnancy, the goats, the chickens, quail, anything you want to talk about gardening and we will be able to answer um, and explain in more detail what his new job is but I'll just go ahead and say that it's working for a compost company so it's more aligned with his morals and they're a really good company that has been nothing but kind and generous to him since he began. So it's been really good. Things are on the up and up. This year is getting better before it comes to an end. So that's a good thing. And we appreciate all of you that have stuck by our side no matter what. Thank you. You have no idea how much it means to us. Thanks for watching Channel the Drill. And we'll see you next time on Off Ropes. And wait, thank you. thanks for watching Channel the Drill. And we'll see you next time on Wholesome Roots. Good job. And be sure to leave a like. Peace!